Our top story on Wednesday, Gateway Jacks announced plans for a $500 million mixed-use development in the North Core area of downtown Jacksonville. Over the next 10 years, the build-out could expand across 22 acres uh, and tack up a price tag of $2 billion. Tim, uh, we were talking a little bit earlier before uh, before we came on air, and it's really apparent that you have your head wrapped all around this subject. So we're going to go to you first. What do you think? So it's a huge project and could have a, a truly transformational impact on that part of Jacksonville. You know, a lot of the focus when we talk about downtown development, rightly so, is basically right around where we're sitting. It's the Jaguars project and all of that. But downtown Jacksonville can't bet at all on just one project. Um, it needs some smaller projects. JWB, is, who's involved with this project, has been doing things spread across the urban core. There's other developments in the works, but this is on par with Water Street in, in, in Tampa, you know, some of the big massive mixed-use developments in places like Nashville, it truly is a step up if it gets done, which I've been covering development in Jacksonville for <laughs> long enough that the if it gets done is always the question. But, you know, signs are really good for this one. Yeah. Um, y- earlier you were talking about how you had a folder of all the <laughs> projects that was supposed to happen in Jacksonville. Yeah, you know, the the, the uh, city council member referred to this, I, not, not the first, as, you know, Jacksonville being the place where, where projects go to die or you know, where, where renderings are done more often than projects are. And um, that is an issue. You know, the big difference, and this is frankly why I'm most excited about this project, is the involvement of DOP Capital. Based in St. Augustine, started up north, came here about six years ago. Um, fast-growing company, um, having an impact on multifamily development across the country, and they got money. So the the issue with development now is banks aren't lending. If you're trying to do a project, you, you, you can't get the funding. And every other time Jacksonville has had some momentum going, it hits this point in the cycle where the money dries up and the projects don't happen. And then when the money starts flowing again, work begins again, and we kind of start out not exactly back at, at you know ground zero, but but close to it. With DOP's involvement, with the funding there, they um, they can actually get the project done. They can actually get the project started. They can get this moving, and then when um, when money frees up again, there'll be Jackson will already be somewhere. Yeah, Dan, do we know exactly where they're talking about starting this development at? Well, part of this is it's basically between the First Baptist Church properties and uh, the the Seven Eleven, and uh, they're across the street from FSCJ and and places like that. It really is a uh, a wasteland right now of parking lots. There's not much there, and the only new development that I can think of really is the Seven Eleven, and that goes back a number of years. You know, Tim is right. I came here in the '80s, and the big project was the shipyards when the shipyards were still there. And it all went fizzle. And now, finally, 40 years later, we're developing all the shipyards property. We finally have a plan for Lache, and that took two or three tries uh, and around. And finally, this looks to have the money. And let's not forget, we've got University of Florida planning that wonderful project. Don't know where it's going to be, but FSCJ would love to have it sort of next to them, which would put this across the street from that, across the street from FSCJ, and right on the cusp of what should be a really well-developed Springfield as the homes and some businesses there get going. Yeah, I was just about to say, so basically we're talking about that area of downtown that's kind of the corridor into Springfield where, does this include the place that, uh, it used to be an old hotel, then it got knocked down, and I think the only thing that's standing is the parking structure. Heart of Jackson, and, and that's owned by someone else, and they're planning some development, and the previous owner to that was planning some development we have yet to be able to get them to respond it's across the street it's across uh, yeah across street. the street and down the street so no that 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 property isn't involved but what, what you're you're pointing out is the that part of downtown just has stuff going on i mean yeah. you have corner lots development on first and main is going to be massive you have um you know plan for more apartments on seventh street further up main street um you have as the Jaguars do stuff here, that's going to bleed into the east side. So it, it kind of, if you look at a map of Jacksonville, it's that it's kind of following Hogan's Creek, you know, kind of sort of where you have um, the the heart of downtown, you know, the central business district. Then you have North Core. Then you get in the Springfield, you know, and all of the development is going there. Um, then you get things like, like the Emerald Trail coming online. That's going to supercharge development, and it's going to connect a lot of these projects in a way that makes it walkable and that makes it 
you know, a place where UF students could walk to somewhere and meet up with with FSCJ students and then go and get, you know, breakfast at the bakehouse on Main Street sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, Tim, you were saying uh, before we went on the air, you know, this the the shipyards or whatever, the stuff going down by the stadium can't can't carry everything as far as development goes. As I said before, you know, it, it does appear that Jacksonville for the first time ever has got like what, five, six, seven major deals going on in downtown. So it, as I coined the phrase before, we've apparently we've reached our adolescent or excuse me, developmental adolescence. They're so optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, as I said before, you know, I was a city council. I've been around for a while. It's like, you know, Jacksonville, good ideas come to die, right? Go to die. Like you say, you've got it. You've got a desk full of rendering. So, but this looks seems to be a little bit more. It reminds me of when I came to Jacksonville in 93 after law school, you know, what was going out of the beaches, right? Jacksonville beach was the blighted area, right? Yeah. All of a sudden way we're running out of beachfront space, right? You know, Florida is growing up, you know, and so people are starting to discover Jacksonville's a lot of opportunity here. A lot of money's coming here, which is wonderful. And I give a shout out to Lori Boyer, the downtown investment authority. You know, that was a that was a brainchild, I think, of the Peyton administration. And it's working. It's working. Yeah, that was actually created under the Brown administration. Oh, what's House, the Brown yeah, administration? The, the, the Civic Council. Well, well, I think John Peyton thought of it, but then yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, and it was it was it was. It is a necessary thing for yeah. downtown. Um, the question I have is that, like, it, it feels like uh, it pulls development a little bit closer to the stadium uh, of, of downtown development specifically. Like, it feels like it pulls it closer to the stadium uh, and less away from what we would call the the, the urban core. Uh, do you think that's accurate? I I think there's a there's an interesting question of where does the development play out and who who's hurt and who's helped. I mean, the, the other downtown writ large fight has been over a gas station being built in La Villa that um, part of the reason that people are upset about it is it felt like La Villa was a blank slate where you could do true urban development and, and the gas station there was a little more of a suburban sort of sort of feel to it. Um, and then you have all the issues with the stadium. How does that affect out east? What? How do the people there benefit mm-hmm. from the money being put in? So I think I think that is the big question of downtown Jacksonville development is not just where does it happen, but who benefits mm-hmm. from a, from a human standpoint, not from the the business standpoint. Yeah, I mean that's a good point. I I, I think that you know. I've seen developments all over the country, not just in Jacksonville, but all over the country. And they promise, the developers always promise that they're going to find a way to work in like low income uh, residences. They do like saying that. They like saying that. And in actuality, seeing it actually materialize, uh, it's, I don't know. I mean, I'm not being scientific about it, but I think it's few and far in between. Um, And given that we have a housing crisis. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, We sent my office sent an inquiry yesterday about that very issue the developer came back said undetermined at this point yeah. so that that's something that definitely needs to be addressed now, and it still, gets into the politics of it as well it does no yeah. no you know still do remember that jacksonville has as much as rents have gone up the um the housing costs here and i'm not downplaying at all the affordable housing crisis that we have but you know rents are lower here than than in pure cities um they're rapidly going up that won't won't be true you know for long necessarily but the issue here really is we don't have enough housing. There's there's a lot of people moving in. There's not enough houses for them. And, you know, Econ 101, not enough of a supply. Mm-hmm. You know, the, you end up pri- with prices going up. So one of the ways, and, and I'm, there are other ways, and there, we'll talk about the, the, the tax that didn't happen, but there are other things that need to be done to deal with homelessness and affordable housing. But one of the ways is to just build more, <laughs> build more housing, build more apartments, build more housing. Housing permits uh, jumped last month for the first time in a while. That's a good sign. It's good that we have more housing stock coming online. And don't yeah. forget that this week there was an announcement that three blighted motels are going to be turned into uh, micro suites, as they're called, a thousand dollars for rent, um, and those motels needed to be redeveloped into something that's cleaner. What side of town are those? Uh, south side, uh, Bay, off Bay Meadows Road and uh, uh, off I-95 and University. But still, that's that's a nice idea to make micro suites. And the renderings look lovely. What was the response of the mayor and the city council to this? Uh, Deegan was at the, uh, the uh, you're talking about Gateway. Deegan, yeah, Gateway. Deegan was at the, the press conference where um, it was unveiled. I mean, they're, they're supportive of it. I mean, but uh, <laughs> I mean, if, if you're in the political establishment and you have people who are, 
by and large, putting their own money into a project like this, you would expect them to be yeah. to be supportive. They will be going for incentives. You know, obviously, any project like this in Jacksonville's uh, development cycle is going to go for incentives, but uh, they have the rest of their capital stack pretty well established, and that that's really important.